Hello everybody, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit with a video on how to make a basic mini album undecorated using our signature black construction tape, some chipboard sheets and A4 black card and some double sided tape. And the mini album I'm going to show you is from our Helena photo box. This was the Facebook Live class number nine and it is a fun little project. If you love the project and you'd like to make the whole thing, then do follow the link below. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to make this basic undecorated mini album from the class and how simple it is to put an album together using our signature black construction tape. So let's get started. The album measures seven and a quarter by five and a half deep, that's inches, and it's got a one and three quarter inch spine. And those pieces I've cut from our two millimeter chipboard, just on a normal trimmer. The board is perfect for cutting on a normal trimmer, just keep a blade spare. And we're going to do some prep work first, just using our signature black construction tape. This was the first um, black construction tape on the market and uh, I tested about 30 different products for durability over three weeks in hot and cold temperatures and of all of the tapes this is the one that I put my name to that met all of our needs as crafters and you'll see why as we go through and use it. So <clears throat> the first thing to do is to rip off some pieces about the length of the short ends of the spine piece and we're going to stick them half on half off and fold over the edge and this uh, process gives your album cover a really nice professional finish around all of the edges just cut the ends off I'm using a pair of scissors that have got titanium blades Titanium blades are really good because uh, they don't stick quite as much as stainless steel blades to the tape. But you can always clean your scissors with some acetate and a cotton bud if you find they're getting sticky. So just half on, half off and press down the ends. And then we're going to prep the album covers. So I like to do, this is a landscape album. So I like to do top and bottom edge first and then the outer edge last and you'll see why. So again, I'm going to go half on, half off. Stick your tape down, half on, half off. The tape comes in two different lengths, 50 metres, which is enough to do all sorts of construction projects. And a tester roll in five metres if you just want to try out the tape. It is available from our website here in the UK, um, only from our website in the UK. But if you feel the postage is too expensive, double up with some friends and have a roll each or two or three rolls. It's well worth investing in. So I've gone half on, half off, and I'm just folding that. You can do it down on your work surface if you want over and sticking it down on the other side of the board and then just trimming off the ends. Now at this stage I'm not too worried that the tape hasn't gone right to the ends of the boards because we're going to cover those ends. So now we've got top and bottom decorated or edged. We're going to take a piece of tape that is slightly longer than that short edge of the album cover and stand it up on the very top edge of your board. Now I do it like that, you can do it like that if you want, and then you're going to take your scissors, tilt them outwards slightly and just cut across the tape, just slightly past the end of the board and then just mitre off those corners and that makes sure that the straight edges of the tape don't curl up under the paper or past the edge of the paper that you're going to stick in place on your covers and then you get a complete coverage right along the edge of your board. Now if by any chance you get a little tiny chipboard piece showing you can just touch it up if you want to with a black pen 
perfect. And that hides that corner. And the reason that happened was because I cut the piece here along this edge didn't go right to the very edge of the board. So it's best not to rip the tape but to cut it and then that won't happen. So let's do again on this little board. So top and bottom, long edges, I'm going to just stick the tape half on, half off. It doesn't have to be exact, It's most of it is going to get covered up with paper, but you want a nice smooth stick. Smooth it over the top edge and then fold it down behind and trim off. It's easier to trim from the crease or the fold to the open edges. And then just get rid of that little black bit off your scissors. And again, half on, half off. This is the quickest way to put an album cover together. And you get a really good secure spine. And you won't get that paper ripping on your spine or that ripped possibility on your spine like you do if you wrap your spine in cardstock. It eliminates all of that. And then I'm going to just lift this one up. Or actually, I'm just going to put that sticky side up and just show you how easy it is to do it this way. And put your board down on the tape. Take your scissors, just trim slightly at an angle at the ends and then snip off those corners. Press down on the top and then fold over. And because I made sure that I cut the tape right to the very end of the board on the long sides, I haven't got any gaps at the corners. So now we're ready to put the album covers together and join it to the spine. So we're going to go like this. So we're going to take the spine and take a piece of tape that is about an inch and a half longer than the spine itself at both ends. And we're going to stick it half on, half off one side of the spine with those ends sticking out. Press it down onto the spine. Flip over and take one of your covers, the undecorated edge, put it over your spine piece, matching the undecorated edges, holding the side edges together, you'll feel them in, the, in your fingers, and then holding them tight or firmly, just go up and over, pressing both edges down onto your work surface until you get to the other side. And then press down, but only press on the chipboard. Don't press the ends because you don't want them to stick together. Then pull your spine away from the album cover and you get a double gap, a natural double gap. Bring in these tails. Now, some of the tapes on the market won't do this. Our tape sticks to itself. So this is where you get that fabulously double strength spine fold and you just cover that gap and when you bring the tape or the spine up and over both sides of the tape stick together and give you a really strong joint on your spine and then we're going to do the same again so you need to turn this piece over so that you've got no joints take another piece of tape that's an inch inch and a half longer at either end Stick it down half on, half off your spine. Press it into place. Flip over. Sticky side up. Bring in your album cover. Match those undecorated edges together. And make sure that you've got the side edges together. Hold the two tightly together. Go up and over, down onto your work surface. Press down, but only on the board. Open out and then bring the tails in and cover the gap. Not mind the gap, cover the gap and press down. And then when you bring that cover over, 
press it down on top of the other one. You'll be able to see whether you've got your covers level. They should line up and then open out and you have got a really professional looking spine. But the album's quite floppy, so we want to give it a bit of strength. Um, so we're going to add the internals now. So if you love this little album and you'd like to make it, you'll find all the measurements on a slide at the end of the video. And as I said, if you like the whole project, you'll find the link to the whole project um, if you want to join the class down below. So I've got a spine cover. I call this a spine cover. It's going to sit over the spine and hide those joints in the tape. And we need to prep this with some double sided tape. I wouldn't use glue for this. I would always use double sided tape because this part is going to hold all of the weight of the album in place. So you want to go around this little piece, which I call the spine mount, with your double sided tape. I'm using score tape. I think it's the best tape on the market and you can rip it rather than having to use your scissors. I'll put the link to it below. So all the way around one side on your spine mount and then using the black tape edges as your guide, put four strips of double sided tape on the inside of your album cover and spine. You don't want to completely tape this because you want the card to drop down into the gutter or the gap between your spine and album cover. If you cover that completely with tape, put your spine mount in place. When you fold up your spines, uh, your covers, the whole thing will distort and rip. So you need to have some space for the card to move. Take off your backing strips. So you could use this method to assemble any sized album cover and you're not uh, using lots of cardstock, you're not using lots of double-sided tape. The black tape has replaced all of that. And if you like to cover your album's edges in treasure gold, the tape takes it beautifully, it won't wear off. And you can also paint this tape. It will take light and dark colors. And then you're centering this piece between the top and bottom edges of your covers so that you've got an even gap showing top and bottom. And this gives you the line to then put your spines on and your pages. Press down over the tape, make sure that it's nicely stuck. And then very slowly just lift up your covers one at a time and you'll see that the card starts to drop into that gap that we've created. So you can bring your cover right over and you get a really nice crease. Just do it slowly because the card doesn't want to fall into the gap. And that's it. Your spine, it's extended slightly because we've got card inside now. You've still got the nice lines and it's not as wobbly as it was without this card in the centre. So now we've done that, we're ready to mount the spine mounts. And again, you'll find the measurements on the slide at the end. So just two little mounts for this album. And because I work in a very black world, I've done some white examples for you. So the first one is just scored half an inch in from both short edges. It's actually one and three eighths wide by five and a quarter deep, you can see. And I like to just use my bone folder and score on those dotted lines both ways so that that spine moves nice and freely. If you're new to my channel, um, I've been crafting for about 10, 11 years. I started in uh, January 2011 and in February 2012 
I applied to get onto the Graphic 45's international design team and was successful and spent two years on their design team, which was absolutely fabulous. And then I was asked if I would be the UK Graphic 45 ambassador for them, which I did with pleasure for five years. And I was inspired by Graphic 45 papers when I first started crafting, and I'm still inspired by them today. I think Diane and the team do uh, a fabulous job with their collections. I love the themes and I absolutely love the colour palettes. So big shout out to all of the Graphic 45 family. So now we have got our scored spine. This one, just for information, some people have problems getting a spine lined up. Now you wouldn't put dotted lines, I don't know if you can see them, but they are there. You wouldn't put dotted lines on your um, spine mount. I've done that just to help with lining up. But you can score that centre piece. So this piece is two and one eighth by five and a quarter, scored half an inch in from either side, and then scored at seven eighths in from either side. So these little gaps here are three eighths of an inch wide. This little piece gets centred over that centre section and forms the middle spine. So if I do it in on the white, you'll be able to see, and then I'll do it again on the black. So there are lots of different ways of putting a spine together, but this is my preferred method. If you fold one of your side, half inch side sections over, you can line this folded edge up with the second dotted line in from the edge of the larger piece and you want to line your top and bottom edges up and pop it down like that and if you do that then that spine section in the middle is perfectly straight in relation to the larger one that you've stuck it onto and then if you were going wider you would just do the same so score lines really help just get everything straight so let's put that one to one side and I'll do the black one. So again, I'm just going to put the score tape down the very centre section of the smallest spine mount. Tape that off, fold up one side. Now, at this stage, if you're not confident that you're going to get this dead straight, just put a little bit of tacky glue on your double-sided tape. You don't need a lot, just smooth it out. That just gives you a little bit of wiggle room time before the glue takes and the tape holds everything into place. And again, I'm folding it up with the second score line in from the right. I'm a lefty, so I always come in from the right. But if you're right-handed, then it would be the second score line in from the left. And press it down into place. And then I just trim off, not a 45 degree angle, but just a tiny little piece from the top edge of each of these spine mounts. So just that half inch section that sticks out. And I do that so that when you look down at the album, you don't see two layers of card where the page joins the spine. Let's get rid of those. Bring in our album cover. And now we're ready to add this to the centre here. So if you're not confident in putting it in the right place, then again, you could draw some guidelines just using this width. So I've folded the two side half inch flaps down and that's the width that you're sticking. But I'm OK, I'm going to just pop mine in place. So I'm putting double-sided tape on that centre section. Three lots. And again, you could put glue over the top of that, which will give you a little wiggle room to get it perfectly centred. 
which I think I'll do. I always think, oh no, no, don't, and then wish I had. So I'm going to do that. So just over the top of the tape, spread it out. I always use my middle finger to spread the glue and then it gets really sticky. And then I try and keep it out of the way of everything else. So I'm using the Anita's Tacky Glue. It's a great glue for uh, crafting. It dries perfectly clear, but is um, has a very good bond. But as you can see, I'm only smearing it on. It's got a grey bloom rather than being blobby white. That's when it's at its most tacky. So now I'm going to turn this over, centre it up, trying to get it as straight as possible between the side edges and lined up with the top and bottom edge of that card piece that's in place already. And then when you're happy with where it's sitting, press it down. And that is your spine in place. So the nice thing about the covers is they haven't got any bulk to them. They are quite flat and ready to decorate. Excuse the clunking, I think somebody's having a skip removed outside. And then I just like to fold those spines backwards and forwards just to make sure that those creases are scored really well. And that's it. Now we're ready to build the pages up. Let's pop that to one side. Let's pop it over here. So the pages in this little album are really simple. Um, and you can make them, depending on how complicated or how much paper you want to use, you can make them as pocket pages or you can make them as uh, just flat pages. If you just want a flat page, then you would cut your page at six and three quarters wide by five and a quarter deep. But if you want your pocket page, um, which, let me bring in the little album, uh, there are two different sorts of pocket page in this album. We've got one that has a little pocket on the front and a pocket at the side and one that has a tuck spot on the front and a pocket at the side. So I'll show you both and then you can decorate them however you like. So I've already cut my A4 card down to six and three quarters wide by it is 11 and 5 eighths deep and then on my paper trimmer let's just get it straight I've scored the card so I'm measuring along the long edge at five and a quarter and then five and a quarter again so what I do is fold the card and then put it back up against the five and a quarter mark and then score and then I'm going to cut it add an extra half an inch on and cut it so the total length of the piece of card is 11 inches long and then You've got a section that's got a score line on. That section I'm going to cut off one and a half inches. So I'm going to put the page back in my trimmer, measuring along the short edge this time with the score line, come in at one and a half inches, and I'm going to cut from the crease like that. So this little album has got four pages in and then I'm just going to manually cut down to that one and a half inch cut line on the fold and that makes your page. I find if you manually cut on the score line rather than cutting it on your trimmer you get a better cut. Sometimes you cut just past the score line and you get a crease. So if you manually cut it, you get a, a better edge, I feel. 
Let's just do this one. So let's make all of these pages up. Let's put them back on the little pile. So again, I'm going to use double-sided tape for this. So you want to hold your score line and crease it with your bone folder. Bring the top section down and crease that edge with your bone folder and then you get a really nice flat page. So I've turned it over now so that I've got the wider edge at the bottom. I'm going to fold that top flap up, put double sided tape across the front of the tab, just snip off those side edges Take off the backing strip and then just bring the whole thing down and stick it in place and then just go around and burnish it with your bone folder and then you've got a really nice flat little page. So let's do that with all of these others. So I'm going to bring this down, bring this over, crease it, crease it. Double sided tape on, snip off the corners. So I put my double sided tape on first because I've got straight edges, then I snip off the corners and bring that down and stick it into place. Now I've done that purposely as opposites just to show you how easy it is to get your joints in the wrong place. So if I want all of my pages to go the same way, I've now got a joint at the top and on this page I've got a joint at the bottom, it's down here, and we're going to join the pages to the spines from the left. So when you're putting them together, just think about where the joint is going to be. So you want to have your page like this with the wider section at the bottom nearest to you and the section that's coming down over the top further away. The joint to the spine is going to be here, so I know that's the right way. So I can put double sided tape on the top here. So check twice, stick once. It's my motto. That little end off. And then bring it over and stick it down. And then just burnish it again just to flatten it down. And then the last one. So wide section at the bottom. Burnish it first. Snip off those little corners. That just hides the tab inside the pocket. And and burnish. And then we have got our four pages ready to go into our album. So let's bring our little album back in. Now, I always start to put my pages in from the back. And the reason I do that is I find it's the only way that I can get them perfectly lined up with the back cover. If this is in completely straight, then your pages will fall perfectly lined up onto the front cover. But the eye looks at this side of the album more than it looks at this side, just as we do in a magazine or a book. So it's really important to line this side up perfectly. So we're going to start on the back spine. So fold your first three spines forwards. You can use double-sided tape or glue. 
or a bit of both. If you're going to use double-sided tape, it's quite advisable to put a little bit of glue on as well so that you've got room to or time to move your page if you need to. Now when you, you need to glue, because these are pocket pages, you need to glue both sides of the spine mount. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing this. So you can put glue on either side of the spine. Just be careful not to press the spine down while you're doing that. Tape with a bit of glue on the top. And then you bring your page in and you drop it onto that spine mount. So the spine mount is in the centre and fit it nicely down onto the album cover. So it won't go down any further. Let it fall down and then line it up on your back cover so that you've got it perfectly straight between the top and bottom edges. And when you're happy with where it's sitting, press it into place. Now, another way of putting your page on, onto a, a, a pocket page in place, is to take your glue and put a little bit of glue. You don't need much. On one edge inside, like that and then just press those edges together and open out. Now you've got glue on both sides and you can drop your page onto your spine mount. And then let it fall down, line it up over the page that you've put in already and stick it down. And repeat. So a little bit of glue. Just try and keep it right to the very edge. It squidges up slightly when you sandwich it together. Open out and pop it onto your spine. If you can, I can't get mine on. That's it. Line it up over the pages in place and press it down. If you were adding a single page that wasn't a pocket, you stick them all to the front of the spine. So you just put your tape or glue on the front of the spine, stand your page up, bring the spine up to meet. Before you really stick it down, line it up over your pages in place and then press it down. So all of your joints are on the back of your pages or the left hand side when your album is open and it just they disappear but I'm just going to carry on and just do the last one as a pocket page open it and drop it in place line it up over the pages and press down. So that are, or is the little album with the four pages in, the four pocket pages. Now you can put these pages in as pairs, I've put them all the same way so the pocket's all on the front, but you can swap them around so you could have the pockets this side if you wanted to, um, so that you've got pocket pages matching and then plain backs matching. It's just a fun little album. And the last thing to add are the pocket tops. I mentioned that this little album has got tuck spots on two of the pages and that's created by adding a last element. And it's just a two inch strip. Again, you'll find the measurements for this on the last slide at the end of the video. Two inches, scored at a half an inch, and then I've just cut those ends off. I'm going to put double-sided tape on here, on the underside of this little flap. Burnish the flap on the score line. Take off the double-sided tape. 
I'm going to add a little bit of glue just on the tape and then you just slide it under the edge of that short section on the top of your page. Press it right down until you've got the edge meet until the edge of the tab meets the edge of the page and then fold it down. And I'll show you how to add a magnet to your pages, but also how to close this pocket with our signature black construction tape. Now, pockets have a tendency to go a bit saggy in the middle. So if you've got some double-sided tape, just put a little bit down right by that score line where those two pieces meet. Take that off and press down. That's kept the pocket really nice and flat. You can still pop things into it, but it won't bulk in the middle. And then you take our signature black construction tape and you can do one of two things. You can just put a single piece up and over the edge of the pocket. When your page is decorated, you won't notice that. Or you can cut a piece that is the right length for the pocket and completely edge the pocket. So I'm just going to start there and trim it off. Can you hear I'm thinking? <laughs> and then I'm just going to lift the edges up and just cut the corners off so that you've got no tape um, curling up where you add your papers. You don't want. And then flip over and just cut the corners on this side. Actually, that wasn't necessary because the paper is going to go all the way over that tape, that side. So now you've created a pocket that is the full width of your page so that you can get something under right up to the top. And also when you're decorating this page, you can slide your paper in really easily and you haven't got to worry about tape holding this pocket down. If you want to add a magnet, I like to add them in our round tabs. They're just easy. easy. So let's get a round tab and a couple of magnets and put the second tab on the page. I got a piece of white card. Let's bring this piece of white card in, pop it under there, and then you can see what I'm working on. Double sided tape, so I'm going to stick this strip on in exactly the same way. So the pocket top, double sided tape on, cut off the corners, take the tape off little bit of glue on top of that tape for wiggle room. Smooth it out and slide it into place right up against the edge of the page. And press down and then open up and you want a pair of magnets. Again, we sell fabulous magnets. I'll put the link to them below and a round tab. So in the centre of the tab, I'm going to stick one magnet, a little bit of glue on either end of the tab. Now it doesn't matter which way down this magnet goes, and you'll see why in a minute. Fold the tab, but I'm going to stick it over the edge of the centre of that flap. So if I lift this up, you can see it's just sitting, I'm just lining it up so that it sits nicely on the edge of that tab, the flap. Press it into place. 
and then take a piece of our tape, put it sticky side up over the top of that tab and let magnet number two attract to it and then fold it over, press the ends of the tape down onto your page and it's as easy as that. So I'll put the link to the tabs, the magnets and everything down below. And that is how to make a quick and simple little album that you can just go ahead and decorate. When you're decorating, you want to cut your paper a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, if you want a nice fine black border around everywhere, an eighth of an inch shorter than the width and the depth of each surface that you're sticking your paper on. And then you get a really nice little black border all the way around. I don't know why I'm showing you with that piece of paper when I've got the little album here. So this is the fully decorated album and I decorated it in papers from the Magic of Oz Deluxe Collector's Edition by Graphic 45. I absolutely love this collection and um, I've just added all sorts of elements. You just have fun uh, with your pages and what you're putting in them and build it all around the photographs that you're going to add. But if you love this project and you'd like to make it, um, I've used our paper clips here just to add pictures in. So what is it? And it sits in this fabulous little box with all sorts of other things in it too. So if you love the project and you'd like to make the whole thing, then uh, do follow the link below and you'll find more information out about joining the class. And um, it was a live class, but all the videos are there to watch and follow along with a cutting guide. Um, so I'll put the link to that below as well. So I hope I've inspired you. Uh, for those of you that are new, album making is great fun. I've been doing it for over 50 years and I never tire of making a new style mini book. We're very lucky we have got the most gorgeous papers available to us to use as well. So enjoy your crafting and thanks very much for watching. And don't forget you'll find all of the information you need to make this little mini album undecorated uh, on the last slide of the video. Do give me the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel and then you'll be kept up to date with new products and projects as they come out. Thanks for watching.